AP reviewers and welcome back. Today we're going to work on equations. We're going to talk about the big three equations that you're going to use in kinematics and for the rest of your physics life. And that's it. Those are the ones. If you're cool with accepting that at face value and you're ready to start plugging in numbers, all the more power to you. Uh, if you're like me and you would like to know where the hell these came from, because uh, that'll like, make you more comfortable with using them, then stay tuned because I'm going to explain all of that. So if you just want to skip straight to the problem solving and the fun stuff, then click here. Those of you who are left, I just want you to know, those people who clicked there, they're cowards. We're going to do the real physics. One thing you should know is that these equations will all assume that acceleration is constant. If acceleration is changing, then you have to use multiple equations one after another, and that's a whole to do, and we're not going to get into that right now. So for now, acceleration is constant. Let's take our acceleration equation. Notice I dropped the delta on the t because we're starting at time equals zero. And also notice that I dropped the bar over the a because it's not average because a is constant. The average will be equal to the instantaneous acceleration at any given moment. Anyhow, what do we know about delta v? Well, we know that delta anything is final minus initial, so let's write that. Looking good so far. Now let's, uh, let's just solve for v. Bring t over here and then add v0. Boom. Equation number one, done. It was easy. All we did was split up delta v into final minus initial and then solve for v. That was it. This equation is a very handy one. All right, now let's give the same treatment to our velocity equation. Delta x becomes final minus initial. And now we're going to solve for x. There's a little trick we're going to do here. Whenever you have a function that's constantly increasing or constantly decreasing, the average will be equal to the exact midpoint. Take this random graph, for example. It is constant, slope is constant. This is initial, and this is final. If we were to take the average value of this entire function, it would go like this, right through the exact center. So that's what we're going to do with our average velocity right here. Average velocity equals initial plus final divided by 2. That's just the midpoint formula. So then we're going to plug that in for v average. And now, what we're going to do next, this is going to look a little hairy for a second, but it'll, it'll all work out, don't worry. This v in here, we're going to replace that bad boy with this value. v equals that, so let's plug it on in. All right, now let's just do a little uh, simplification in here. Uh, v0 plus v0, we can turn into 2v0, combine them. And then this thing here, we can split into two separate fractions, just algebra. Uh, these twos cancel out, so then you're just left with v0 plus at over 2. And then you multiply this t in here, you just distribute. And then ultimately, you're going to end up with, boom, we just figured out equation number 2. I don't know why, but uh, that's actually my favorite equation in physics. It's not like it's like the most useful or the easiest or the hardest or whatever. I just, there's something about it that draws me. I don't know. All right, it's gonna, we're going to erase, but we're going to keep this statement right here because we're going to need that. All right, we're going to bring back our acceleration equation from before, and we're going to split up delta v into v minus v0, like usual. And then we're going to solve for t. That's a nice easy one. And then we're going to take that t and plug it back down in this guy right here. Okay, and then we're just going to multiply that on through. Uh, bottom becomes 2a, top becomes, uh, that's a difference of squares, so. And then we're just going to solve for v squared. And then you do a little fancy calculations and you end up with... And check that out. We got x final minus x initial. 
delta x. And that's our third equation. Nice and easy. I'll pop that guy over here. And that's that. We've gotten our three equations. Now let's uh, welcome back those who skipped past all that fun bit. Uh, I want you guys to know you missed some good times. There were, there were laughs. There were tears. It was, a, it was an experience. And you should be sorry that you missed it. Just saying. Anyway, uh, now we're going to try solving some problems with these equations. So, a driver in his car slams on the brakes to stop the car. The car decelerates at negative 8 meters per second squared. And it leaves 87 meters of skid marks. How fast was it going just before it hit the brakes? Okay, so how fast was it going just before any of this happened? That's v0. That's initial velocity. That's what we want to find. So we, they tell us that the acceleration was negative 8 meters per second squared. They tell us that there are 87 meters of skid marks. That means that from the spot where he first hit the brakes to the spot where he stopped, it took 87 meters. So that's his displacement. And finally, we know that his final velocity is zero, because he skidded to a halt. Now, now we just gotta decide which equation we're gonna use. We need something that has v0, a, delta x, and v. All right, let's see. Uh, this one has time in it. We don't have anything with time. This one also has time in it. Um, there it is, v, v0, a, delta x. Perfect. All right, so we're gonna bring that baby up here. And we want initial velocity, so we're going to solve for that. All right, and now we're going to plug in our known values. Uh, we know that final velocity was zero, so we can just cross that out, right? We can just get rid of that now. And we'll plug in what we have here. V zero, acceleration was negative eight, and delta x was 87. And you plug that into your calculator, and you get 37. 0.3 meters per second. What did he see that he was stopping for that was further than 87 meters in front of him? At least I hope it was further than 87 meters in front of him. Anyway. Problem number two. A man is walking along the sidewalk at a leisurely one meter per second. He's approaching an intersection. And when he is exactly 40 meters from the opposite corner, the little walk sign starts flashing. That means that he has 15 seconds before it'll say, don't walk. What must his average acceleration be if he is to get to the opposite corner just as it starts to change? So uh, let's recap. They ask us to find acceleration. That's our unknown. They tell us that he was walking at one meter per second. That's his initial velocity. They tell us that he is 40 meters from the opposite sidewalk, he, that, is, that his displacement would have to be 40 meters. And we know that his time is 15 seconds. That's the time he has to take to get there. All right, uh, which equation has acceleration, initial velocity, delta x, and time? All right, uh, this one does not have delta x, this one does not have time, this one it's got our v0, our t, and our a, and we have delta x. This is x and x0, which is all we need to get to delta x. So let's bring this bad boy up here, and while we're at it, let's subtract x0 from both sides. So on our left, we're going to have x minus x0, delta x. And now we just solve for acceleration. And now we just plug in our known values. And then plug that all into a calculator. Acceleration is 2 ninths, or 0 0.2 repeating, meters per second squared. And there you go. So now you're getting familiar with how you solve these. The next video, I'm going to show you an AP level problem on this topic. It's a real doozy, so don't worry if you don't get it, because I didn't get it either when I was at this point in my course. Um, you can like go on ahead and then come back later, once you've had more experience with this. Either way, I will see you again soon. Thanks.